Hey, doing everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch, and I'm back with another review. Today it's a game called Sky Gamblers Afterburner, so for those of you who love flying, stick around and check out our breakdown of this game. I'll also announce the winners from our last competition, so make sure you stick around till the end of this video. Let's see if this one then is worth your investment. Now anything that has a title after burner in has me instantly interested. I don't know what it is about playing games, but they kind of grab me from the outset. The problem is most of the ones I've tried are usually quite disappointing. Atypical Games though have made a good few flight games on mobile devices and also have Radiation Island and Battle Supremacy to their name. So this particular game has mobile routes for sure. Sky Gamblers Afterburner does offer a story but there wasn't anything here that had me really caring about my character which is a little bit of a shame. There is some dialogue here and there but not always and most of the dialogue between you and the other pilots is on the screen text. I wasn't too bothered as long as there were some intense dogfights to get into and luckily there was here. Now I want to talk about the controls first. You're able to control the jets in a variety of different ways. The developer is proud to admit that the user interface was developed for the Switch from the ground up and that's always a good thing. I have to say it does show it's a pleasure whether using the Joy-Cons, Pro Controller or Motion Controls which is an option. Although I preferred the Pro Controller for sure. Playing in handheld mode is also great. You have the choice of simulation and casual control simulation giving you a more realistic feel. Skip the tutorial though because it's one of the worst parts of this game. It's so slow to get through and painful as you don't actually get asked to do much other than listen. It certainly doesn't really involve the player much. Now performing all manner of manoeuvres and using countermeasures to dodge missiles while in flight is a breeze and an adrenaline rush. You can reach some immense speeds here and this game has that feel of speed which is really important in a game like this one. There are four main things you're going to do often. Shoot, release missiles once locked onto a bogey, and release flares so you don't get hit by a missile and use your boost to avoid incoming barrages of missiles and bullets. Each of these recharge quite quickly. That brings me on to my first issue in this game that I encountered. I never really felt like I was in that much danger because I'd have infinite weapons complete my missions and as long as I flew well, dodged incoming threats, I would complete the stage without any problems, even in hard mode. Now, the campaign takes you around stages around the world from Rio de Janeiro, Hawaii, New Zealand, and more with some fantastic skyline views. Within each mission, you'll get to control a differing plane, some of which are contemporary and others more futuristic. All can be unlocked and customized to your heart's content with lots of differing color variations possible. And while controlling different craft felt good, they didn't feel different enough to me. The campaign consists of simple tasks from taking out submarines, taking out other planes and blowing up bases and is all rather fun but standard affair and a little bit shallow. Some missions even require you to land on a runway which I actually did rather enjoy more than some of the main missions. Something about getting a nice landing without crashing felt kind of rewarding. Now once the campaign is complete which takes around three, three and a half hours or so, then you can take to the skies online. You can do that from the outset if you want to as well. There's a number of competitive modes which also include co-op if you want to play with a friend. And this is where I believe the strength of this game really lies because playing against others really will test your skills to the limit. And here you can play a number of modes like team deathmatch, free for all, defend the base, capture the flag and survival amongst a few others. Now you also have a custom games mode which is a mirror image of the online modes but strictly offline where you can choose a stage and a number of modes such as capture the flag last team standing which is similar to the online modes only here you get to play against the computer ai there is even a free roam mode where you can just fly around and i was practicing my building avoiding skills which didn't work out too well it's nice to be able to choose these for some quick games now getting down to low health here and you can land to repair or reject perish and you watch the rest of the players much like in the online matches 
cash gathered from these battles allows you to buy other aircraft to unlock as well as better weapons to take to the skies online. But the sound effects here are rather good. It sounds thrilling to increase engine speeds and I love it when you break the speed of sound barrier. It always sounded exciting, not so much though when you're about to stall. Missiles flying around have a handy gentleman letting you know whether you taking out the target or missed and there's nothing more thrilling than flying head to head with another plane and bullets ricocheting off each other. Visually the game is not quite AAA territory but they do a rather fine job. The vistas are quite nice and the planes themselves look really good. It's got a nice arcade style which I like and yes of course there are details which could have been better. For example I would have liked more effects when taking down an enemy or for example when you crash as a plane there isn't much happening in terms of explosions. It just kind of comes to a thud like you was having a small car accident. They all seem to go down in the same way as well. The smoke effects are a little weak and there are some rather poor performance issues at times. There are differing viewpoints from a cockpit first person view and a view of the plane which is the view I preferred. Now here we have a game which is about 20 bucks or 15 29 if you're looking at the UK eShop. Can't really compare it to anything else as it's not on PS4, PC or Xbox and while there are similar games on mobile devices which the devs themselves have made, this version is not. Now I think uh, £15.29 or 20 bucks, you'll get a decent enough playing game where there's lots of fun to be had online but it remains to be seen how much of a community there will be and you're going to be relying on others buying the game to keep it fun. In terms of my verdict then, there's something about games which have mobile roots which many fall foul to and that's that they're a little bit too shallow to keep people entertained for long enough or a long period of time. Sky Gambler's Afterburner has quite a bit going for it though. It's not the best flight game I've ever played in my life but certainly not the worst and I quite enjoyed my time with it. There are enough online modes to keep you entertained as long as there is a large enough player base and that will remain to be seen. The campaign as well as the customization and unlocks of your jets and weapons will be enough to please many of you. I'm glad that you can play the online modes offline too which is a nice little bonus and those looking for a flight game will find a lot to like here. A good 7 out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking around till the end. Really appreciate that. And if you like this video, then hit that like button. Of course, if you're a new watcher, why not consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification so we can notify you of when our new video reviews and feature reviews go live. You wouldn't want to miss it. I'll put some other videos up above now so you can check those out. And for you guys that want to know if you've won the competition, stick around. Those names are coming up now. Take care guys, my name is Juan Romero and I'll see you again on the next one.